Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss further into differential equations and now look at exponential growth and decay. Basically, uh, one of the models for population growth, which I went over in my earlier videos, you can see those in the video links below in the description of this video. So one of those models was based on the assumption that the population grows at a rate proportional to the size of the population. Or in other words, for example, if you had population P, the derivative of it, or the rate of change of this population, and let's assume it's growing, equals to K times it by that population, where K is a constant, P is a population. So in other words, this is saying that the rate change or uh, the growth rate of the population is proportional to the population size, because there's a population, it's just multiplied by a constant. And now the question that we ask ourselves is, is this a reasonable assumption that uh, for population growth? Well, let's just uh, get through that. So suppose we have a population, for example, bacteria with the size P equals 1,000. And at a certain time, it is growing at a rate of P prime equals 300 bacteria per hour. So you have one of them that's 1,000. Yes, yeah, so it's initially 1,000 and it's growing at 300 per hour. Now let's take another 1,000 uh, thousand bacteria of the same type and put them with the first population. So, so if you're, uh, these are the exact same bacteria, so this is also growing at a population uh, rate of 300 per hour like that. We'll just write BPH for bacteria per hour. Uh, so it's the same thing as the other population. So each half of the new population, so if we were take this, let's take another and put them with the first population, so now I have a new population, so each of them comprise half, so a thousand is a half, so each half of the population was growing at a rate of 300 bacteria per hour, so we would basically assume that, well, the total population of 2,000 to increase at a rate of 600 bacteria per hour, yeah, initially, so Initially, yeah, we would just assume, well, there's already uh, a thousand each uh, on uh, each half is a thousand growing at 300 per hour, so just doubling it up, uh, we're just p combining the two, so you would assume that it's 600 per hour, which seems reasonable. And again, provided that there's enough room and nutrition in this uh, batch of bacteria. So basically from this little uh, example, uh, or hypothetical example, so if we double the size from that, we double the growth rate. In other words, the growth rate is proportional or related to the size. So it's basically uh, proportional to it, yeah. So in, in general, it seems reasonable that the growth rate should be proportional to the size. Yeah, you double the size, you double the growth rate. And the same assumption applies in other situations as well, in fact. So in fact, in nuclear physics, the mass of a radioactive substance decays at a rate proportional to the mass of it. And in chemistry, in other examples, the rate of a unimolecular first order reaction, uh, this is just, let's say, a one molecule, uni is just one, a simple, basically a simple one molecule reaction is proportional to the concentration or the amount of that substance in that reaction. And another example is actually, uh, this arises as well. In finance, the value of a savings account with continuously compounded interest increases at a rate proportional to that value. And this makes sense. If you put a lot of money in your bank account that has uh, interest compounded, yeah, that has compounded interest, well, it will grow more if you have more money in there. So in other words, it's proportional to the uh, amount of money you have. So in general, yeah, if y of t is the value of the quantity y at time t, so we're just looking at, again, a general case, so I'll just block this out like that. So in general, we have this, so uh, y of t is the value of the quantity y at time t, and if the rate of change of y with respect to t, or the derivative, in other words, is proportional to its size y of t at any time, so basically we're just saying in general if you have a quantity and that rate of change of it is related to that to itself then what we end up having is dy uh, dy over dt is equal to k times y where y is just uh, I mean where k is just a constant so this is what we have yeah, and again here I just put that down so where k is a constant. So this is just a general case in uh, that same model I looked at before about population growth. Turns out it works for a lot of different uh, different applications in the real world in the real world as well. So 
This equation is sometimes called the law of natural growth, and that's if this k is uh, greater than zero. This just means that the rate change is positive um, if k is greater than zero. And it's a uh, natural decay. If k is less than zero, then it's basically decreasing of the rate change. Yeah, it's decreasing. The quantity is decreasing. So this is what it's called, often called law of natural growth and law of natural decay. And this this is has its own name because it's, again, like I stated earlier, this arises a lot of times in the real world. And also because it is a separable equation, recall earlier videos that uh, on what separable equations were basically, here you could easily move the, all the y's on the left side and all the t's on the other side. So if you could separate the two variables uh, on each on either side, then that's called a separable equation. And because it is, we can solve it by the methods shown again in my earlier videos on separable equations. So make sure to watch those in the link below. So what we'll do is rewrite this out so we can move the t's on the other side and the y on this side. So what we end up getting is, well, let's write it out initially here. So dy over dt equals to ky. Move the dt on this side, move the k on the other side, and we do that by what we end up having is a dy over y, which equals 2a k dt. Because it's y, we divide both sides by y, we have it over here, and dt, we just multiply both sides by dt, right, a better t. So what we end up having is this, and now what we'll do is take the integral on both sides, and this one's all in terms of t, it's all in terms of y, and the integral on this side, that's just, well, kt uh, plus, yeah, the k is constant, and then the dt integral of dt is just t, plus a constant, we'll call this c2, because on the other side, that's integration constant, we're going to have to have one on the left side as well, like, you, uh, as usual, integral of this is ln absolute value of y, that's integral of 1 over y, and then plus a constant c1 right here. So put this down together, here we have kt plus c2, and let's just combine these two, so ln absolute value of y equals to kt, I'm going to move this on this side, and then call this plus c. So that's what we have right here, where yeah, where c is equal to well, c2 minus c1, and again that's just a constant subtraction of constants is still a constant and then to put that all together we have that and now what we'll do is uh, take both sides as a power of e so we'll have e just so we can get rid of this lawn by using the natural log properties and again you can learn more more about those in the video link below on natural log properties or just logarithmic properties in general so we have this we take it on both sides and also applying power rule functions uh, power rule properties to this, we can simplify that as well. So this e ln cancels, we have absolute value of y, and now what we have here is e to the kt, and then this just becomes multiplication. So in addition of powers like that, you can just multiply with the same base, so e to the c. And again, you can learn uh, more about this and the proof of it in my earlier videos in the video link below. So this is an absolute value, and we could remove that absolute value by writing y equals 2, well, plus or minus. Move this uh, e to the c in front here, because it's a constant. e to the power of c times e k t. So this is what we have. But I'm going to actually simplify this further, and what I'll write is y is equal to, get a better arrow, y is equal to, and I'm going to combine this all, this, this is all just a constant, plus or minus e to the power of c, and call this a times k, uh, yeah, times e to the power of kt. So we'll have this again where a is equal to, well, it could be plus or minus e to the power of c, depending on whatever specific application you're doing. Or this could also equal to zero, because here you can't have a zero unless c, unless, uh, c is going to negative infinity. But we could apply zero here because. I'll just recall again, I went over in, a, in the population growth videos that if you have y equals to zero, then a derivative is y prime is equal to zero. Then if we take the uh, y prime equals to ky formula, which is simply uh, this one right here, that's just y prime, same thing. Yeah, I'll just write it just to be com uh, complete or just be more clear. So dy over dt, if we take the differential equation, 
the same thing as y prime and again we have both of them both of them equal to zero and this actually fits so you have k times zero equals to zero which all equals to zero so this is yeah so we have zero equals to zero which is which is true so the solution y equals to zero is a yeah so it, the function y equals zero is a solution so we could apply this uh, a it could still equal to zero and that will still work and also uh, note here what I'm gonna write is note at y I mean actually at t equals to zero at t equals zero what we have in this function is y of zero or t equals zero and then this equals to a times e to the k times t which is zero e to the zero which equals to well uh, yeah, which equals to a. That just e to the zero is just one. So equals to one like that. So what this means is a is just the initial value of y equals initial value. Let's spell that wrong. Initial value. The initial value of y. So I'll just circle that like that. Let's circle it a bit better. Yeah, so now what I'm going to do is put this all together is because, uh, well, because this equation occurs so frequently in nature, and uh, hence the name, uh, the natural law of growth or decay. So we summarize that we have, uh, summarize what we have just proved for future use, and I'll do some example videos in uh, next video, next couple of videos, so make sure to watch those. So we'll summarize this all together and have basically the initial value problem I'll spell this a bit better. Initial value. So, so what we end up having is an initial value problem. Recall again what I stated before. Initial value problem is just when you have a differential equation and initial value, and that's what our and because we know what the a value is is the initial value. So what we have is dy over dt. So the initial value problem of this differential equation dy over dt equals to k and given that the initial value y of 0, we'll call this uh, I mean, yeah, y0 or y0 or y0, it has, so this initial value problem has uh, the solution, well, it's right, has uh, the general solution of, uh, and then, so basically that's what we have, and that general solution is y of t, is equal to y0, which is, uh, we'll just write this as, we'll call this y0. So the a has become y0 because that is just our y of 0 like that. And this equals to y0 e to the kt, where again k is just a constant. So we could combine this all together and and there yeah, we have a nice neat little uh, uh, equation for or the solution for this initial value problem and I'll use this utilize this in uh, next videos for on the examples anyways that's all for today I'll feel you learn from this pretty uh, pretty interesting uh, video on uh, differential equations exponential growth and decay and again I'm gonna go over some uh, examples uh, on this so stay tuned stay tuned for that anyways that's all for today hopefully you learned and like always uh, yeah you can download these exact notes in the link below thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution